Hello everyone, Aryan Matrix here, welcome to episode 2 of Zelda 2. And last time we beat the first palace, and now we're on our way again. Oh man. I kind of talked over that part of the music, but that's a really cool part of the music where the notes go all fast. They're like... It's really crazy fast. Alright, yeah, you're going to want to head to this cavern before you move on to the next town. Oh crap. Oh, I hate it when this guy moves... Yes, it's better when he, like, recoils back towards you instead of moving forward. Because if he moves forward, it's more likely that he'll hit you into one of these pits. Alright, watch out for the Octoroks, too. As long as you time their shots correctly, you shouldn't have any problems there. And we're gonna have a Garaya at the end here, a red Garaya. They're not too bad. When they're up against the wall like that, the Garayas are really easy. Because all you have to really do is duck and stab at them, and they'll pretty much never hit you. Like, even with their sh overhand shots, they'll actually pro they'll like shoot right over you. And then you just turn around to block that. I don't know if I ever explained this either in the first episode, but as long as you're on this kind of, like, yellowish, golden road, you'll never, like, the monsters won't appear. They'll only appear if you stray off the yellow path. And most of the game, you actually won't have any yellow path to walk on, so that's going to be kind of annoying. But you'll get used to it. It's kind of hard to avoid the to avoid the monsters, though. I am error. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have gotten in a load of shit if I hadn't shown that off. That's like one of the most famous things in this game. I am error. <laughs> like seriously, I want to talk to this guy. I don't know why. Find magic in a cave south of the castle. Yeah, that's the first thing I did in the game, dude. Hello. Hi. Something that's weird about these NPCs that walk out of the house, though, is that when you talk to them, uh, talk to them, they'll turn around regardless of which way you talk to them from. You saved the trophy. Come see my uncle. Yeah, it's that trophy that we picked up in the cave just now. And strangely enough, this girl's not actually going to be in the house when you enter here. What is my dog doing upstairs? He's like scratching the ground. Scary. With this, you can jump very high. Cool, you gonna give me the high jump boots? Well, no, it's actually a de jump spell, which costs 32. Yeah, you'll see that now our shield costs 24 instead of 32 like it did when we got it. And that's the result of our level 3 magic, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but like I was saying before, when, when a person walks out of their house and you talk to them, no matter which way you talk to them from, the, either the front or the back, they'll turn around before they talk to you. So I guess they were expecting that you'd always talk to those people from behind, so that when they turned around it actually looked like you're nabbing their attention and they're turning around to talk to you. But if you talk to them from the front, it looks like they're turning away from you and trying to get, like, get away or something. I don't know, man. Yeah, they, they put these Octoroks in kind of a tricky little pattern here. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah, if I never specified this either, those blue magic jars, they'll refill exactly 16 magic, which is basically one of your bars. So once your shield costs 16 magic, then it's really easy to get, like, to get that magic back when you have to use the shield. Because you'll see those, like, bl these blue magic jars a lot. They're dropped plenty of times throughout the game, so... And every time you do it, it's pretty much a free shield when you see it. Alright. Jeez, did I really get my life up to level 4 in the first video of this thing? That's crazy. Because that's half of our life levels. That's amazing. Of course, it's going to go a lot more. It's going to take a lot longer from here on out. So, like, you can see we have 500 experience to our next level, which is not an overly large amount, but it's still formidable compared to the 50 that we need for our first level. Yeah, and this is where you're going to need to use your jump. Oh boy. Sweet. I think if you head over in here, there's actually a fairy that you can use if you need some healing. Which I don't really, but... I don't know, I, I like to be at full life most of the time. Yeah, we have this swampy area now, too, where you're going to walk extremely slowly. Here's a 1-up doll, by the way. Now we have four lives. Yeah, those are scattered on random plots of soil. Well, not random, but predetermined plot to soil. Alright, crap. Ugh. These guys are annoying. These weird frogs with bandanas or beards or whatever they are. I don't even know what to make of them. All I know is that they're annoying and I hate them. 
hate him so freaking much, man. Yeah, but in my opinion, um, like, that swamp area up there, when you run into monsters in the swamp, they're pretty much the easiest encounters that you can get throughout the entire span of the game. These bridges are annoying, because there's these constant, there's these skullfish that constantly pop up. And you have to keep, like, turning around and trying to, I don't know, and blocking and... Yeah, and if they hit you, they'll actually drain some of your experience, just like those guys in the palace. So be careful of that. I think there's a pee bag in here. Yeah, but like I was saying, the monsters in the... The monster encounters in the swamp, they're pretty much the easiest ones that you'll ever encounter in the game. Like, I, I honestly think that the hard monster encounters in the swamp are easier than the easy monster encounters in the in the plains around here. Like seriously, it's that easy. Cause just a few Octoroks when you run into the monsters in the swamp, and they're really easy to kill because their pattern is so predictable. And when you run to a hard monster encounter, it's just the same thing, except with birds that randomly come down and and try to hit you. But those birds are really easy to jump over, anyways. So it doesn't really matter. All right. Hello. Yeah, most of the people in this game don't really say much. I lost my mirror. Oh dear. Oh, are you vain? You need your mirror to live? Well, let's just see if we can find that mirror. Maybe under the table here. I found a mirror under the table. It's infamous for one, that's an infamous line there, because that's like one of the only times ever that Link actually talks to you. It's pretty crazy. All right, let's see. I got your mirror, lady. Oh, you found my mirror. Follow me. Cool. And here, you don't actually have to head here before you uh, learn, before you go to the second palace. You actually probably won't head here before you go to the second palace. But I'd recommend it because this is actually where you learn the life spell. So you use this magic to restore your life. And that's really good. Oh, except it's very expensive. You can see it costs 60 magic. And even with level 8 magic, it'll cost 50 magic. Like, and with level 8 magic and all your magic containers, you can only ca like cast it a maximum of two times, even when everything is maxed out like that. Of course, every time you use it, it actually refills um, like 48 life, if we're, presu if we're presuming that each unit of life is 16, just like with a magic. In Medoro Swamp, find a handy glove. Hmm, that's some very handy information, I guess. Alright, this is... I should have shown her text there. I don't want to talk to you. I am much too busy to talk to a stranger. <laughs> what? Alright. Stop and re and rest here. Yeah, so these orange hags, they'll actually refill your magic when you rest with them. And then there's these, like, uh, red ladies. And they'll be like, please let me help you come inside. And they'll refill your life when you do that. So it's really cool. Of course, what they do in those houses, I don't know, man. Uh, do you just sleep in their beds, or do you sleep in their beds? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, if you keep heading left here in this town, you'll actually reach a dead end. So we're not going to bother with that right now. I actually probably should have picked up what I needed to pick up before heading to that town. Because now I'm just going to have to go back and show you where it is. Cross this bridge again. Over yonder. Damn it. Yeah, when they appear in front of you like that, it's even worse because they, like, even if you stop right away, they're pretty much bound to hit you. No matter what you do. I see I got lucky there when I missed, when that guy missed me. Huh? Oh, crap. Stay away from me. Oh, jeez. Alright. Oh, what's your action? Oh, I didn't want to run to you. Stupid spiders. Uh, all these blue spiders, these are even worse, because they'll come down and come off their chain or of their web, and then they'll lunge at you. So you want to kill those as fast as possible. Man, look at me. I'm I'm being a noob here. Look at how much life I've lost already. I was just in a town. Yeah, so this spot in the forest, well, actually, there's a house here, and there's this guy. This little fat elf man. Bagu is my name. Show my note to Riverman. Oh jeez, well isn't that cryptic? Well, it's only well this pla this whole place is cryptic. How are you supposed to know to go there? But um, yeah, that's actually what you need. You need to talk to Bagu there in order to and get his note 
in order to progress further in that town that we were just in. I'm not sure what exactly that town is called. I'm not really sure of any of the towns, town names in this game. I think I know, like, where Darunia is, but that's about it. Yeah, Darunia, you know, the big boss of the Gorons. He's a town in this game. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Alright, I don't know if I should be even showing this. I prob I'm probably, like, speeding this up or something. Just because we've already seen this trip to the town. I don't know, though. Like I said, I'm tr just kind of doing this really casually. Just a little side thing with my other Let's Plays. But man, I tell you, this game is so much fun. Despite it being really hard, it is really fun, too. Alright, here we have Riverman. You know Bagu? Then I can help you. Cross. Sweet. And he opens the bridge for us! What a nice, gallant l young lad. Alright. Now, if you're playing this game for the first time, or even if you have, like, even some experience with the game, you know, I should actually fill up on life. I don't know what I'm doing. I can explain this as I'm doing it, though. As I'm going back to fill up on life. Um, the way I'm doing this, like, you should not be going this way at this point in the game. You should definitely be heading for palace number two instead of going this way. Because we're heading to Death Mountain right now to pick up the hammer. And normally you would only do that after palace two when you actually level up st substantially and you have, like, attack level 3 or 4. Um, because the area of Death Mountain is very, very treacherous. And unless you know what the hell you're doing, don't head here right now. I'm just doing it because I want to get out of the way, plus I've never really done it this way before. I'm just trying to challenge myself a little bit. Um, yeah, so head to the second palace before here. But you know what? I think we're actually kind of out of time right now. So we're going to have to tackle Death Mountain in the next episode of Zelda 2. Man, <laughs> this LP feels so unprofessional compared to whatever, what, whatever else I've done in the past. I don't know, old games, it seems like you can do them much more lackluster than newer games, but regardless, I hope I'm doing it justice for you. So, uh, oh, and my cat's waking up too, so that's another sign to end things off. So, next time we'll tackle Death Mountain and probably die. I'm not going to lie to you. So thanks everyone for watching, this is Argon Matrix, signing out. Thank you, and good night.